I quickly, I hop out of the truck and I run around to the other side and I see him getting out of his vehicle and he runs as well. And as I turn, as I turn the corner of the truck, my heart just sank. And I thought, holy Before I turn the camera on, you know, recounting this situation that I dealt with, that I'm still dealing with, it, it just, it seems surreal. You know, it, uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be overly dramatic here, but this was, uh, this was quite possibly the scariest thing that's ever happened to me uh, because, you know, it's not just... You know, if I think about, if I think back through the traumatic things that happened in my life, you know, whenever I blew out my knee, uh, my football career was over. Um, you know, I caught a, uh, I caught a staph infection and I was in the hospital for 11 days. That was really scary, you know, and I'm sure that there's others that, you know, that I, I, I can't really think of right now, but you know, all of those things happened and I didn't have, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't married. I, I didn't have kids. I didn't have a house, you know, so, I, you know, an entire household to support. And as I was watching what was going on, I was just, I was in disbelief. There were so many things that were racing through my head that, and, and now as I, you know, right before I turned the camera on, I was you know, kind of recounting the situation, you know, to prepare for you guys to tell the story that it's just, it's, it's like, it's hitting me all over again and it's hitting me differently this time. Uh, I've been watching a lot of YouTube lately as I'm sure probably a lot of you have been, especially if you've you're self quarantined or if you're kind of forcibly quarantined at home and you know, there's a lot of real, there's a lot of positivity going on. There's a lot of people coming together. You know, the best of humanity is really, it's, it's showing itself. It's showing out and it's great to see it's heartwarming. And it's at the same time though, it's heavy, you know, it feels really heavy. Uh, so we're not going to, you know, we're not going to dive in to, uh, to that in this video. Uh, in this video, I hope you get some entertainment out of this. Uh, if you're, you know, a, a, maybe a company truck driver, or if you're not even a truck driver, you know, look at this video and uh, hopefully for, for some entertainment and, or maybe some, maybe think about, you know, what truck drivers go through on a daily basis. And maybe next time, um, whenever that truck driver is, is going slow in your lane, maybe cut him a little bit of slack. But anyway, so... Let's rewind to yesterday. I was driving, I picked up a load yesterday and I was driving out of, coming out of Washington and this load happens to be going all the way to Mississippi. And it's a, uh, it's a load of, a load of lumber, so it's pretty heavy. And I was climbing a pretty decent hill, um, you know, coming out of uh, Yakima, Washington. And this hill, it was, Oh, what time was it? It was roughly four o'clock in the afternoon. We'll call it that. And I was, as I was driving along, I saw this, you know, it was a van or an SUV and they, they slowed down as they were passing me. And then I saw them just really mash on it and, and speed up and get out in front of me and then they kind of slowed down again and and as a truck driver you know things just kind of go off in our brains and we look at this scenario and you know whether we're thinking about it directly or not we know that something's going on and so we see that and you know obviously now that's that's kind of like a warning you know a defensive driving mechanism kind of kicks off in our brains and so now we're watching this person and I'm watching it and I see the window roll down and I, I see the hand go out the window and kind of do this number and I'm like, oh no, they're, they're flagging me down. Like that's, that's usually never a good sign. Well, I look in the mirror and in the back, you know, there was some trucks back there, some other four wheelers back there. 
and I see them distancing themselves from me, and now my heart kind of drops. And then also in the mirror, I see some smoke rising up uh, from behind the cab. And then I see some little, what looks to me like rubber pieces kind of flying off. So my thought in my head was I blew a tire. And then the next thought was, well, I didn't see, I didn't see or feel a tire blow. You know, normally you can kind of feel it. And I didn't feel that. I saw the rubber, so anyway, I knew that it was bad, so I needed to pull over and, uh, and, and get stopped. And so I pull over, and as I'm slowing down, I am almost to a stop now, and I look in the mirror, and I happen to see red and blues back there. So a cop has, you know, has come up. And instantly I knew that, you know, there's definitely something going on. The way that as, as quickly as he came up onto me, uh, something was definitely, definitely wrong. You know, it's this wasn't a, oh, this truck driver blew a tire, let me go see if everything's okay, let me kind of block the road a little bit. No, no, this guy pulled up on me. Uh, I didn't know if he was gonna pull a gun or <laughs> what was going on, but I quickly, I hop out of the truck and I run around to the other side and I see him getting out of his vehicle and he runs as well. And as I turn, as I turn the corner of the truck, my heart just sank. And I thought, holy, this just, this can't be happening. This can't be happening. This is, this is an owner operator's absolute worst nightmare. And on my exhaust, there was a ball of, there was a ball of flame, probably, probably about the size of my torso. And I, I just, I can't even put into words all the different thoughts that were going through my head. Uh, I knew that something needed to be done, but where this fire sits, if you're not familiar with trucks, my exhaust pipe goes underneath my truck and out the back, kind of sitting on my driver's side. And right next to where this fire was, was my diesel tank. Now diesel's not, you know, it's not really that flammable, but <laughs> you know, it's a big fire sitting right next to it. You can best believe that, you know, that's kind of how trucks would blow up. But anyway, so that was a thought that was in my head and, and you know, my adrenaline was just flowing and my brain was moving a thousand miles a minute. And I, I, you know, I asked the officer, I said, sir, what, you know, what should we do? It, it just didn't even register to me to run and grab my, my fire extinguisher. So that was his suggestion. Let's grab our fire extinguishers. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> so I run back to the, uh, the truck and kind of had the wherewithal to grab my wallet and my phone. Um, you know, everything else, my, <laughs> my laptop, my tablet, my, you know, whatever, my camera, you know, all this stuff, all of that stuff went through my head, but just needed the essentials and then grabbed the fire extinguisher, booked it back around and the, uh, the officer and I, who he did not want to have any part in the video and Hey, I don't blame him. That's fine. But I greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you happen to stumble across this video, uh, we put out the fire and we blasted it. And thankfully it, you know, whatever, it, whatever it was fell down to the ground. So it kind of fell off of the top of my exhaust. And I thought that's really weird. So we went around to the, the driver's side and we blasted it and moved it out from underneath the truck. And we got over there and then we blasted it and put it out. And at this point now we're trying to figure out what in the world this was because it wasn't like it was a piece of metal or, you know, like the exhaust somehow caught on fire, got so hot that it caught on fire. Um, you know, it, it, it looked like it was some type of insulation, some type of material like that, that had gotten caught, but it didn't really make a whole lot of sense because it was sitting on top of the exhaust pipe. So, you know, I, I like I have I had minds. My mind is just blown here. And as we're discussing things, uh, it starts to smolder again as it was sitting there. 
and the, so the picture that you see or you know this footage right here that I'll show uh, it you know he, he went and stomped it out and it just just dissipated and it's like okay so yeah it was definitely some kind of material and that it's really strange that I picked it up it's really strange that this fire started so, uh, you know, he asked me, he said, yeah, you know, can I have all of your information, all the truck information? He said, I'll go write up a report. He's like, why don't you sit here, check out the, uh, check out the damage and, and kind of see what you can come up with, see if you're going to need a tow truck or, you know, kind of what's going to happen. So as I'm looking, I look over and, and the, pretty much all of the damage is all inside of the frame rail. Okay. Now inside of this frame rail, runs a bunch of airlines and a bunch of electrical lines and when i mean a bunch i mean a bunch like 20 30 something like that a lot and so i'm sitting here looking at this and, and at first glance of course i'm thinking the worst like my truck is screwed um without air going back uh, there's no way that anything can move so right there i i immediately thought well i'm gonna need to be towed I'm going to have to be towed somewhere and going to have to, uh, you know, have all of this replaced. Not to mention what I don't even know, it might be wrong. There's, there could be a ton, and I mean a ton of stuff wrong just from this happening. Uh, for an example, the ECM or the computer of the truck could easily have gone out. That part alone is like five grand. So, you know, you get the picture. This could have been multiple, multiple thousands of dollars on up into the teens anyway i digress so as i'm assessing everything and looking at all of this i'm seeing a lot you know i'm seeing kind of a lot of damage everywhere but a lot of it honestly kind of looked superficial and i thought well that's weird um that you know maybe it just didn't go long enough to kind of burn all the way through uh, but unfortunately it did get to uh four uh, quarter inch airlines and one of the uh like the three eighths or three quarters inch uh, airline, that would be the big air that's running back from, from the truck. I really couldn't see any other damage other than that. Just looked like five airlines. And I checked it and I thought, okay, so it registered to my, you know, the thought process kind of registered and said that, uh, well, if it's only air, why don't I try turning on the truck? So I went and tried to turn on the truck and sure enough, fired right up fired right up there was uh you know my my none of my engine lights came on no you know no codes popped up nothing i mean of course i had no air but you know it was just my mind was blown at this point you know i the way that i look at it is you know a, am i unlucky that this happened sure but that's not how i'm looking at this whatsoever i'm looking at this as i'm extremely lucky that what happened is all that I'm that happened and I'm dealing with now because there you know there there's a, there's only a few scenarios here and the f the first scenario is we catch the fire extremely quickly but we put it out there's no damage no harm no foul down the road motors that would have been great but you know or the damage that kind of happened which was pretty light all of the rest of the options here would have been absolutely detrimental because these airlines had i been on the road at full speed another less than 30 seconds i don't even know how much how long but less than 30 seconds those my brakes would have absolutely locked up and lord knows what would have happened at this point um you know there are a ton of different scenarios that could happen and none of them end very well so what happened is kind of best case scenario the way that i'm looking at it and you know that's really lucky by this time the officer was done and he came back up he gave me he gave me the uh place to go get the uh, police report if i need it if i need to make an insurance claim and you know looking at this it looks very likely that this is going to definitely add up to far beyond my deductible so i'm you know i was thinking at the time i'm going to have to do that well, the officer said, he said, look, I can call out a tow truck for you. He said, but you're not gonna like the price. It's probably best if you find it, you know, find one yourself. He said, you've got 24 hours to move the truck. He said, it can stay here for 24 hours, but whatever you choose to do with it, feel free. And I was like, cool. So I've got some time to kind of process. I thought I was gonna have to make a, a quick decision and, you know, move the truck. 
So, uh, oh, by the way, forgot, he had called the fire department. The fire department came out and they looked at it. They were just as puzzled as everybody else. Uh, they said, okay, well, everything's good. They uh, went about their business. So uh, they were very quick to respond too. So that's much appreciated. Anyway, and so the, the officer, he left and I, you know, now that he was gone, I, I put out my triangles and I went back to look at the damage and I, that was all that I could see was five airlines. And I thought, okay, well, let me, I called Kenworth, that was the first call that I made. And I kind of talked to them, went over the situation with him. I explained it as best as I could over the phone, told him that the truck fired up. And, you know, he was, you know, the shop was completely unavailable for an entire week. He didn't have a mobile person. So, you know, he told me to, you know, call someone else. He said to try and use a, you know, use a, a, a mobile service and try to get it moving. That way you can get it down the road because the, the hook is expensive. So I took this time to hop on my phone and I pulled up Trucker Tools and in one of the great functions that this app has is a list of local service providers. And I clicked on that, you know, some, uh, some service guys popped up, boom, called the first one, didn't like what he had to say, boom, called the second one, loved what they had to say. And uh, it was that quick. I mean, I, it was just open the app, click of a button, within five seconds, I had a list of people that I could call to take care of my situation. And that's one of the great things that I love about this app is that it's so versatile that really this app is for any truck driver, any level, company, owner, operator, carrier. And yes, this this video is sponsored by Trucker Tools, uh, but it, you know it's a product that I fully believe in, and I'm excited to be working with them. Um, you know they do have an update coming out. Uh, it's it's I don't know when it's going to be released but I'm really excited about it. So, you know, there's a, there's a link in the description down below that you can click that link and download it, or you can find it uh, in your app stores today, but be sure and download Trucker Tools and thank you for sponsoring this video. But so after I, uh, you know, when I was on the phone with, you know, with the service guy, I explained to him what was going on, uh, told him, you know, roughly how many fittings that we were going to need and uh, that'll come into play a little bit later. But, um, you know, they were on top of it. They did the best that they could, gathering up as many as they could, came out, they were, we were messing with it. So the original five hoses that we found that were destroyed, he fixed all of those. Fired up the truck. <laughs> well, the, uh, the two airlines that are coming out of the air dryer, they were shot too. So now, we had to look for more, you know, look for more um, fittings. And actually, I think he had enough line, uh, but he had to call someone out to, to bring more fittings out. And so we, long story short, which I know this is already long story long, but long story short, um, he had to reroute those two, uh, those two tubes and got that one going, fired the truck up again, pow one of the other airlines blew. Fixed that one, fired it up, pow, one of the other airlines blew. And it's like, man, you've gotta be kidding me. So this is nine airlines. And by this time, now I'm getting extremely discouraged and I'm thinking that I'm probably not getting out of here because he did make the statement that, you know, this was kind of the last one that he could fix. You know, anything beyond this, it's just gonna keep blowing and I'm wasting, you know, everybody's time is being wasted and uh, he could either come back in the morning or I could tow out of there. Well, luckily, <laughs> that was uh, that was kind of the last, that was the last one that had to be fixed. And I was able to build pressure and it held pressure. And I was able to get up, you know, get down the road and uh, there was a truck stop 15 miles down the road. I went in there, parked, shut it down, got some sleep woke up the next morning and actually still had air in the system. Couldn't believe it. Uh, my air, I've had a little bit of 
a little bit of air issue. I've been fitting, you know, fixing some fittings here along the way of the past couple of months. And so I, I haven't woken up with air in my system in, I don't know, it's been a little while. But, uh, you know, to actually wake up to have air in the system, that felt really good. And that felt like I was going to be able to get done what I needed to do on this load that I'm on because this load's going all the way to Mississippi and from there I've got some other plans so I'm not gonna go into that you're gonna have to stay tuned you're gonna have to click that subscribe button and ring that bell but I guarantee you there's going to be a uh, there's gonna be a huge rock to the boat if you will and I think you guys are going to uh, be shocked and enjoy it. So make sure you're subscribed and make sure those notifications are turned on because YouTube's been acting a little, you know, a little wonky lately. But uh, anyway, that was, you know, that was the story. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. Um, you know, leave a comment down below. Let me know what's the worst maintenance thing that's ever happened to you. Um, is that maintenance? That's not necessarily maintenance. Let me know what's the worst thing that's ever happened to you out on the road. I know I, I just had a video about that, um, you know, just a few months ago. Matter of fact, I'll link that somewhere up there. I don't know, but that was a terrible, terrible story. Now that one didn't have anything to do with, uh, you know, this, things going wrong. That was, you know, kind of, it, it, it was just, I don't know, it could have been an absolute disaster. Uh, so check that one out if you like the stories. Um, you know what? Actually, if you like the stories, I'll I'll, put, I'll go ahead and put that right there. I'll put that right there. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. Please stay safe out there. You know, I love you guys. And, and it would hurt my heart to hear of anything bad that, you know, happens to any one of you. So, you know, be safe out there. Um, you know, self, uh, what is it? Self dissociate? Um, no. I, I keep forgetting this stinking term. What is wrong with me? Self-isolate yourself. And um, as always, guys, stay driven.